I don't know how I follow <coughs> the last two speakers. I just I write dirty movies. I don't know how. But, um, anyway, uh, this story is about hopefully my best friend and I getting a second chance in Hollywood. Um, the story starts um, in the early '80s at the Junior, the Grand Island Junior Tennis Open. So if you guys think about it, there's Wimbledon, there's the U.S. Open, and there's the Grand Island Junior. Well, that's where I met Andy Stock, and I hated the kid. Absolutely hated him. He hated me. We were nemesis. Um, and did I mention we were seven years old? Um, I don't think we spoke a word to each other until we were 12. Um, but once we started speaking, I don't remember who broke the ice, but uh, we've been best friends ever since. Um, fast forward a little bit, we uh, played tennis at Lincoln East, won a couple state titles, we played a little college tennis together, and fast forward a little more, I was coaching tennis here at the university, and he uh, went on to get his doctorate in political science and was teaching at uh, the University of Colorado in Boulder. And he was back one winter break, and we were in my apartment down here, um, downtown, and I said, so, you know, how's, how's the teaching going? And he said, Rick, he goes, I'm awful. He said, the students hate me. He goes, I, I'm, I'm horrible at it. I, I wanted to say, like, so you got your doctorate. It took you eight years to do this, and, and you're horrible at it. So I said, I said what, what are you going to do, Andy? And he said, it's not what I'm going to do, it's, it's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to write a movie, we're going to make a bunch of money, and uh, that's what we're going to do with the rest of our lives. And I said, oh, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> Sounds great. Well, he said, you know, I, I said, what's this movie going to be about? And he said, well, think about it. What, what do we know a lot about? And I said, well, we know a lot about tennis. He said, yes. And we know a lot about um, goofy tennis coaches that we had, borderline creepy tennis coaches that we, <laughs> that we grew up with. Um, I said, yes, we, we, we had a few of those. So we took out a piece of paper and we wrote down a scene list, and we were cracking each other up and kept thinking, like, what if this really became a movie? And I kind of forgot about it. Andy went back to Boulder, and a few weeks later, I get an email from him, and he has written the first couple scenes of this movie, and they were funny. And he said, let's get this going. You write your scenes, get them back to me, and let's, let's see where we are. So we did this back and forth for about a year, and we finally finished it. What are we going to do now? Um, so we started sending it into these contests, these screenplay contests, and we don't hear a word from anyone. We don't hear that it sucked. We don't hear that it was great. We, we want to hear something. You know, I, I'm not really living it up as a tennis coach, but we're, and Andy's in debt from all the student loans. You know, we're sending in 25, 50 bucks to these places and not hearing a word. Well, we're about to give up on the whole thing, and we finally find a contest that we think is right up our alley. There's two things going for it. It guarantees feedback, and Gordy Hoffman is running it. Gordy is the brother of Philip Seymour Hoffman, who is one of our favorite actors. Um, so we send it in, a few months later we get a call from Gordy, and he said, absolutely loved your script, <coughs> you guys won the $5,000 prize out of 1,400 scripts, and I'm sending this to my friend who's a producer at Sony. And you know, I wasn't even, I didn't even hear a producer at Sony, I heard $5,000. <laughs> so that's all I was thinking about at the moment. Um, so this script, kind of caught fire around Hollywood. It was making the rounds. We didn't know this, but it was making the rounds. And we got a call one day from Tracy Jacobs, who is a, an agent at UTA, which is one of the biggest firms in, in LA. And she said, I want to, I read the script, I want to represent you guys, and took us all for about two seconds to say yes. And so now her clients consisted of um, Johnny Depp, Harrison Ford and a couple dorks from from Nebraska now. So, so that was that was a major moment. She um, she started telling us what we needed to do. She said we needed to write a TV pilot. We needed to come out to LA 
and meet with these showrunners who are producers that have made it in the business and now they they take these scripts and try to sell them to the studios. So we wrote our TV pilot and went out to LA and met with some showrunners. One was, I remember Paul Reiser, um, if you guys remember him. Um, and we <coughs> liked him, but we, we met with a few others. We met with Steve Levitan and Chris Lloyd. And these guys just, we really hit it off with them. And it kind of reminded us of maybe what we would be like in 10 years. So they ended up selling the script for us to um, Fox Studios. So basically the first two things we, we ever wrote, we sold. Um, nothing happened with the pilot, um, but don't feel too sorry for Levitan and Lloyd. Um, they went on to create uh, Modern Family. So, and I heard it's, it's doing okay. So, um, so that's the first two things. Meanwhile, uh, our first script was bought and they started filming in Austin, Texas. Um, it's called Balls Out, Gary the Tennis Coach. Um, and a side note, very inappropriate, a side note, um, somehow my mom got a hold of the script. I did not want her to read it. <clears throat> she read it and when she finished, I said, well, what did you think? And she said, well, it's kind of offensive to women. And I said, Offensive to women, it should be offensive to everybody. It's, it's, it's very offensive. So, anyway, so Balls Out, Gary the Tennis Coach, starred Sean William Scott, who's Stifler from American Pie, uh, Randy Quaid, and was directed by Danny Liner, who uh, directed Harold and Kumar, and Dude, Where's My Car? And I think Shawshank for Dinner? No, he didn't. That was somebody else. Um, and I don't know if it was our script or the movie, but all three of those guys, I think their careers were, were ruined right after because Sean went to rehab right away. Randy had thought someone was trying to kill him, tried to move to Canada, they wouldn't accept him. I don't know what's going on there. And uh, I think Danny, the worst part, I think Danny's directing Geico commercials as well. That's what I've heard, so. Um, anyway, from there, like I said, this opened a lot of doors, his first script. Um, Jeremy Piven read, if you guys remember Jeremy Piven, uh, Ari from, from Entourage. He read our second script, which is about a used car salesman, and he loved it, said, I want to be the lead, and this was on a Thursday that he read it. On Friday, he gave it to his brother-in-law, who is Adam McKay, who directed Talladega Nights, um, a lot of Will Ferrell stuff. He's Will Ferrell's production partner. Apparently, they read it on Friday, and we sold the script on Monday, so it happened pretty quickly. So basically, the first three things we we wrote, we um, sold, and the um, second one was called The Goods, and it was in 1,800 theaters. It was a small budget, it was about $10 million. Um, it made about 15, 15 million, which is, it did okay. And then in, um, we found out that it uh, sold a million DVDs and um, rentals in the first year, which did really well, so we were really happy with that. Um, after that, we have written three scripts, and this is where the second chance comes in. Um, we did not sell our third, it was called Who's the Chick with Dick? And <laughs> I don't know why, but um, Ashley Fisher was producing that, and she just could not get it done for us, I'm not sure why. But and we've written two other scripts since then, um, and we're on our fourth one right now. We just finished a draft and we're hoping that um, we get a second chance and hopefully get something else on the big screen because I've always heard that uh, Hollywood likes to come back. So, thank you. Our next storyteller is Curtis McCarty. Curtis was in prison for 22 years for a murder he did not commit. He was released 